afternoon. We have a fantastic lineup of panelists, and it's my pleasure now to introduce the first one. And this is Ale Bloom, Research Associate at the University of Manchester. She'll be walking us through the CESDA data catalogue with a spotlight on discovery at national and European levels. Thank you, Ali, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Steph, thank you. So uh, as Steph said, I'm Ali Bloom from the UK Data Service, and I'm gonna give you a quick intro today on data discovery, the CESDA data catalogue, and some examples of the chronic disease and cancer data that is available in Europe at international and, European, uh, and national levels. So. So data discovery is a key part of all different kinds of research projects. It's essential to those that are reusing data, but it can also be very important in projects that collect original data, for example, as part of your background or your literature review to give you a bit of an idea of the context of your research. And data discovery usually follows a key set of fundamental steps, which you can see here. Um, and this is an example from the um, DMEG. So first you need to develop an idea of the data that you need, and then you need to locate a suitable data resource such as a catalog or a repository. Search this for suitable data candidates, and then finally you need to evaluate these candidates for relevance and quality. Some appropriate resources, and then give an example of um, the CESDA data catalog, which is a resource that you can search. Um, but if you do want more information on the other steps, uh, these are gone into in more detail in the CESDA um, DMEG. So there are a few key places where you can search for suitable data, and these include search engines, data lists and hubs, registries of data repositories, data journals and data catalogues. And again, more information about this can be found um, in the DMEG. So the example I have of a key data resource for European data is the CESDA data catalogue. And this catalogue contains the metadata for all the data held in the CESDA archives. And it has details of over 30,000 data collections listed. So as we saw from um, the introduction, not many of you have used the data catalogue before. So there is a wide range of data in there and I'm sure there'll be um, something relevant to your research. And the types of data that the data catalogue holds are cross-national data, country or nation specific data, labor force surveys, household panel surveys, and general social surveys. So now we've got a bit of an idea of the places where you might find data. Um, I'm just gonna give some examples of some data sets on cancer and chronic disease that are available in Europe. And I'm going to show you some data sets from multi multiple countries or the whole of Europe and also from individual countries or nations. So the first example I have here of cross-national data is the ECIS and the European Commission's European Cancer Information System. And it provides data on the indicators of the cancer burden across the EU 27, as well as some non-EU countries. It provides estimates of the incidence and mortality for 2020 and uh, previous years historically, and it also has information on survival estimates. You can apply filters to allow you to select data by country, age, sex, or the location or type of cancer. And the geographical patterns can be visualized with maps, and the years of data also allow the analysis of trends over time. As well as this, comparisons can also be made to the EU27 average. My next example is uh, Eurostat, and Eurostat publish up-to-date, high-quality, European-wide statistics. And they hold lots of health data, including data on long-standing illness, health problems, and chronic conditions. And these can be cross-tabulated with things such as sex, age, labour status, urbanisation of area, educational attainment and activity limitation. So lots of those kind of social and economic determinants um, in there that can be explored. And they also hold information on health determinants and healthcare more generally. So information on healthcare systems, self-perceived health, etc. Visualisations can once again be created from within Eurostat's um, website and the data can be viewed in table, line, bar or map form and can be downloaded from the data browser in multiple formats. 
so here's an example of a map I've created using Eurostat data. So here I've visualized the data from 2014, which shows the percentage of those living with diabetes in each country or nation within the EU28. Uh, and here you can see that, again, they've got the comparisons to the aggregates that can be made, so to the 28 or 27 um, countries. So now an example of the kind of data that's available for individual countries. So this study looks at healthcare in Norway for people with chronic illness um, and it's survey data in particular that can be reused. It's a cross-national postal survey that was conducted in April and May 2013. And it was designed to gain knowledge about how those with chronic illnesses, and in particular this example, those with ME or chronic fatigue syndrome and celiac disease, how they experience the quality, accessibility, and coordination of primary and secondary healthcare in the Norwegian national health system. And what's really interesting about this project as an example is that it coordinated with other, um, other nations that shared particularly similar healthcare systems to Norway. So this study coordinated, or this data also has data that coordinated with England and Canada. And I think it's a really great example of kind of international collaboration uh, on healthcare data. And more information about this and the metadata is available through the CESDA data catalog. So my final example today is the Cancer Research UK Cancer Awareness Measures. And this was a web-based survey which was coordinated by the charity Cancer Research UK. It is a repeated cross-section And it uses a set of questions called the CAM, the Cancer Awareness Measures, to assess the public's awareness of cancer types, symptoms, risk factors, and screening programs. And it also looks at the reasons patients might delay seeking treatment and the impact that various messaging campaigns have had. And again, the metadata for this um, can be found through the CESDA data catalogue. So that was just a brief rundown, a quick kind of introduction to data discovery and to some of the treasures that we can find uh, in the CESDA data catalogue. Um, obviously, there's many more data sets in there, so please do go and have a look. But right now, I'm just going to give a quick demonstration of how you can use the catalogue. So you should be able to see my screen now. Please um, let me know if that's not clear. So if you want to use the CESDA data catalogue to search for data, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to datacatalogue.cesda.eu. And from here, you can start your search by typing uh, your relevant search terms into the search box. And please note that you can also change the language if you want to search for data sets um, in a particular language. You can also apply the filters down the left hand side of the screen to help narrow down your search. So, for example, the topic search can allow you to search by CESDA topic classification. So we could search disease and we would be able to search for the data sets that are relevant to that. And you can also apply filters by collection years. So if you wanted the most recent data by the country that the data covers, and also by the archive that publishes the data. So you might know that you have access through a particular archive. I'll talk a bit more about access in a minute. Um, and you might want to search by a particular publisher. So let's do a quick example. So we're interested in cancer. So say I'm searching for that and I want cancer data from, let's say I want cancer data from Germany. So once we've searched our data, we can click on them. So I'm gonna click on the first example, which is international care of the dying, quality of care for cancer patients. And once we click on this, this will take us to the summary information page, which gives us the key information about the data set, including the title, the creator, and the study number. And these study numbers might, the format of these might vary between different countries and archives, just to note that. Underneath this, we have the abstract, which gives us some key information about the data set um, and the study that was used to collect it. Under this, we can see the key methodology, information on sampling procedures, etc. But what I really want to highlight today is this, which is the access section. 
And as we know, a lot of health data might be held at higher, more secure or more controlled levels of access. And this is the section that you want to look at for that information and um, whether there are particular requirements in place for accessing this data. So currently you can't um, filter the SESDA data catalogue by access um, level, but this key information here is really, really useful to let you know whether, um, whether you're going to be able to access the data. So for this example, we can see that the data can be made available um, when ordered in agreement with the principal investigator. So this is where you want to look if you found a healthcare study and you're not entirely sure whether you will have kind of the, um, the ability to access it. So the final thing to say is once you've found your study, if you want to access and download it, you can click on the access data button at the top of the page. And this will take you to the archive or repository that allows access to the data. So here I've been taken to the NSD page. And once again, you'll find a bit more information on the study here. And if I click uh, data access, we can see the data access uh, requirements reiterated again. or data from a different source. The final thing to say is that if you need more information um, about the data catalogue, you can click on the user guide button up Hello. here. I'm so sorry about that. Um, you can click the data catalogue button up here to give you a little bit more information um, on the basic search and the search terms. Um, and again, if you want even more in depth, you can have a look at the COVID-19 roadshow and um, if you go back and look at our recording of that, we also provided a little bit more of a deep dive into the data catalogue there. So thank you all very much for listening. Thanks a lot, Ali. I think it was very interesting to understand how you can search uh, that vast amount of, of data sets in the SESDA catalogue, uh, the data catalogue, the 30,000 uh, data sets, uh, and how you can look for those data sets that really apply to your research that you may need for your research. Um, if you have any questions for Ali, please put them in the in the chat, and we'll come to them uh, in the in the in the panel discussion. 